Um, put your hands together. Welcome Philip to the stage, please, ladies and gentlemen. My name's Phil Intel. Uh, I run the CPASS line of business for Ribbon. And I thought I'd better explain to you a little bit about who Ribbon is. Uh, let's see. There we go. Um, just before you go in. So first of all, Ribbon is the merger of two companies, uh, two telecom providers, uh, basically Sonus Networks and GenBand. So the traditional customers of Sonus and GenBand are telecoms carriers, uh, as well as enterprise providers. So you can see that basically uh, Ribbon uh, is in about 100 countries. We have about 2,300 employees. And we're number one in SBCs worldwide. Uh, we're also number one in media gateways. And number two in voice switching, so basically application server type platforms. And uh, the tr traditional business is basically supplying telecoms uh, infrastructure to carriers and large enterprise businesses. Okay. And this is a quote that kind of sums up our view of what's happening within the CPaaS market. Despite standalone solutions attaining an early market lead, we believe that the winning vendors in the UCC, Unified Communications and Collaboration Industry, will be governed by integrated platforms that can combine multiple features onto a single platform in the cloud. And the future is a programmable uh, communications and API economy. So this is a quote from Stevens.com in January of this year. And we're really looking at an integrated communications marketplace of UCAS and CPaaS services. And just a little bit of background, um, the, the Candy Cloud business unit within Ribbon started about five years ago in the CPaaS space. And we offered out a uh, CPaaS platform uh, globally to very large enterprises and carriers. And one of the things that we kind of learned at that time, or what we believed, was that um, CPaaS and unified communications as a service were fundamentally going to come together. And we began looking for, really, what was the business model for CPaaS going forward? And what I really wanted to talk about here is what's the role of the traditional carrier, and what, do, what is the business model that we see that carriers can address for CPaaS? So uh, Ribbon's a little bit kind of unique amongst some of the, the CPaaS providers. We have an established uh, UCAS uh, services. We don't sell direct to enterprise. We go through partners and so on on the UCAS side of things. We have customers like the uh, city of Los Angeles, uh, which is actually one of the world's largest UCAS installations. Um, Hertz globally, basically our, our custom of, our, of ours on the UCAS side of things. We have our CPaaS line of business for which I'm responsible. And we have uh, a number of contact center type solutions, such as our WebRTC gateways, our wrappers, and various other types of applications. And what we saw a few years ago was that really these needed to come together. When you look at traditional pure play CPaaS type platforms, they don't often have the concepts of UCAS. They don't have the concept of the end user, of service subscriptions that you might apply to an end user that you might have within a kind of UCAS type of world. And those kinds of concepts exist within, within large enterprises routinely. And it tends to drive a lot of our thinking in terms of how the platform is actually designed and works. Uh, most recently, um, we've been over the last three years basically building our CPaaS platform over again from being a pure public cloud play into something that's designed to integrate and overlay um, carrier networks. So uh, the, most, the first launch of our new platform was with AT&T in March uh, for Enterprise Connect, where AT&T brought to market the AT&T API marketplace. There's a few significant things here in terms of, uh, of the strategy that, that we have from a CPaaS perspective. First of all, it's all about a marketplace. It's not about pure APIs. Uh, there are APIs there, they are enablers, and we'll talk a little bit more about that. 
Um, but it's also about turnkey applications that can be built, packaged applications that can be built and brought to market on those APIs. They go hand to hand in, in how we're kind of dealing with things. But this is significant because for a tier one carrier like AT&T, it's one of the first cases where they are going fully digital in terms of allowing customers to kind of sign up, register for services, consume services on a pure API basis, on a transactional basis, but also in, uh, in subscription-based business models. They have a mixture of business models depending on their business units that are involved. It's also driving a digital evolution for AT&T across business units as we begin to see new lines of business integrating with the marketplace and offering their services through it as well. So you can go there. Fortunately, if you're, unless you're a US customer, you can't really sign up because they kind of <laughs> don't allow you in just yet. Um, but uh, you'll see that there's developer documentation uh, and references there. If you have a US SIM uh, or telephone number, then, uh, then you can actually kind of uh, go through and kind of see what that's all about. In Europe, and by the way, I've got a nice plug here for the workshop that we just ran. So please, after this session, if you go back in time a little bit and go off to our workshop for, uh, uh, for uh, <laughs> our, our KPN API or, uh, store with AP, uh, KPN. Um, in, in Europe, uh, we've already announced API services with KPN as integration into their API store, um, offering our WebRTC voice and video uh, services as part of that. And, um, and that's the start of a, a number of different relationships that are being built around their new platform. And finally, Eta Salat uh, is a case where we've put a completely private cloud instance of our UCAS, our CPASs, and our, our contact center services into a regulated customer's network. And that's a key thing for us. We work with carriers, we work with regulated telecoms. Everything that we do from uh, a, a cloud perspective involves uh, things like you know, uh, LI uh, and uh, meeting uh, regulatory requirements in each country. Okay. So how do we see CPaaS? Well, CPaaS is one piece of our puzzle. Um, so we have a CPaaS platform that we brought out that offers APIs and SDKs. It offers voice and video, WebRTC calling, PSTN gateway functions, phone number purchases, uh, obviously SMS, uh, messaging, chat messaging, uh, you know, various uh, services that we all kind of know and love from a CPaaS perspective. And that is designed to integrate with whatever services you have. Your existing UCAS platforms, Broadsoft, Cisco, our own application servers, IMS cores, what have you. Uh, it's designed to kind of integrate with messaging systems that a carrier would have, uh, and integrate with um, carrier uh, location services, SIP trunking. Our role is basically to help carriers to monetize their network in a new kind of transactional and fully digital way. And uh, part of what the platform includes is uh, a, a full kind of billing engine to integrate within carrier oper uh, OSS and BSS type environments and provisioning engine that ties back into the carrier environment where basically we can do all of the billing within our platform and feed that through to carriers so that it can go on to the customer's bill. Equally, um, what the CPaaS provides is a common API platform. So it doesn't matter what carrier is involved, the APIs that we offer to developers are the same. If you write an application that basically runs on top of the, the Ribbon CPaaS platform, those applications can basically run identically whether or not you're running on top of AT&T's network or Edisalat's network or another customer that uses our CPaaS platform. And it's designed to overlay UCAS services as well, both to allow you to expose and offer UCAS services digitally. In the case of Eta Salat, they want to be able to offer small and medium businesses the ability to kind of sign up, subscribe to UCAS services, overlay services. In the case of larger carriers, it's a matter of for their UCAS customers being able to offer overlay services that aren't present, things like soft clients, things like uh, uh, um, uh, Teams integration, things like uh, the ability to add uh, call re recording and analytics, um, SIP trunking to their customers. And 
Finally, there's a turnkey application marketplace. So it's not just around exposing the APIs for developers, but also giving a market for applications to be offered to the carrier's customers. So we're trying to go from the APIs being the core building blocks to being able to offer out completely packaged solutions. And, and that's important because one of the learnings that we had in dealing in the, in the CPaaS marketplace was that, um, it, that carriers and end enterprises um, have a hard time getting their heads around exactly what they do with APIs. And it helps in order, to, when we were selling uh, CPaaS, uh, then we discovered that basically creating turnkey applications helped people to understand what they could do with the APIs. Now we're trying to help them to monetize those APIs. And finally, there's a full uh, turnkey kind of e-commerce self-service portal for exposing carriers' assets and applications, APIs, and integrating with carrier um, uh, identity systems and uh, uh, carrier purchasing and uh, self-service uh, customer sign-up. Internal to our CPaaS platform, we've taken an approach of basically providing brokers for all of our APIs that export the public normalized API that we offer to developers. And then that maps back to multiple service offerings across different customers. So when you go to use an API, you can subscribe to one service or another. If you're an AT&T customer, your APIs will all kind of terminate on API services where they, on AT&T services where they exist. If AT&T doesn't have a service, it'll be provided out of the ribbon cloud. And if you're on another carrier's network, it'll be served by the services present on that network. Okay, so if you send an SMS, um, then it'll go through your local carrier. And it's possible for applications to subscribe to multiple services at once. So if you want to build an application that can do SMS, MMS, RCS, that can talk to Facebook, that can uh, talk to Line or any of the other uh, types of messaging services, you can do that all in one application that simply subscribes to multiple messaging services. So it provides an ideal kind of bot API type experience for that. But it was built really to be able to kind of leverage all of the existing infrastructures that are put in place in carriers today. And so for us, it's about trying to move from an API economy into an app economy. And the way that our customers like to put it is that the APIs are essential. They're like the ingredients of a good meal. But when you combine them together into uh, packaged applications, that can go to uh, an, uh, a carrier's customers, then that's like the, the gourmet meal that they want to offer up as part of that. And there's a business model behind that. It's a business model that we all kind of gotten exposed to over the last few years. It's the standard app store type of model that basically if you want to get to market to AT&T customers, if you want to get to market to Edisalat customers, and enter into their app stores, then um, there's a subscription model, there's a, uh, a, a commission that is paid on all sales that basically go onto the carrier's bill to that, to that customer. And behind this then is what we call the candy store. <laughs> So we try to support developers basically in building applications and entering into multi multiple stores. And the candy store basically is what's de designed to be a fully white labeled experience for carriers to be able to offer apps out. And each carrier um, has complete control over what they offer through their own stores or their own kind of marketplaces. Um, so when you go and you sign up to the AT&T API marketplace, what you will see very shortly is the ability for a company that signs up in a Twilio fashion, creates an application, uh, creates a project, develops that application, you'll be able to apply to go on sale through the AT&T App Store. And from the Candy marketplace, you can apply to go into multiple carrier app stores. 
each one governed by its own rules, each one kind of with its own, uh, own target verticals and requirements in terms of how you would kind of sell your application, but basically creating one application that can be sold in multiple markets. Um, now, why would an ISV, somebody that develops applications, fundamentally wants to kind of hit the, the broadest market possible, why would they be interested in this kind of a model? Well, it really comes down to adding a channel. So we're engaged with, um, with dozens of companies right now who want to be able to sell through carrier model, right? And in most cases, it's not a very large investment for them. If you've already done integration with CPaaS APIs, if you have an application that already sends SMSs, can make phone calls, what have you, then adjusting to using APIs from a carrier is not that big a change uh, if it gets you into sales with a new market. And so what we're seeing then is a great deal of interest in being able to offer services because traditionally, it's been almost impossible to get to market with a carrier, going through their legal, their branding, their qualification type processes, um, it is enough to, for most companies to kind of balk down. And what we're really doing is lowering the friction <laughs> that we talked about this morning uh, in actually getting those applications to market. And the CSP is also able to leverage their advantages in terms of bundling, in terms of pricing, network security and quality, and their existing relationships and even overlaying services to customers who are purchasing SIP trunking options and so on from them to be able to offer these, these applications essentially as overlay services to their customers. So. In summary, the way we're looking at CPaaS is not just in terms of um, exposing APIs. And it's not just about our services. In fact, it's not really about our services at all. It's really about providing that API layer to the assets that carriers have within their networks today and helping them to expose and to monetize those in a fully digital manner. And it's about building a community across carriers where the APIs are basically consistent and where you can help to develop skills and, and applications to get to market and where you have a marketplace available to offer those applications as well. There's a suite of communications APIs and services that are coming in terms of uh, full global SIP trunking, uh, SBC as a service type offers. Uh, and a whole range of new services that are being added from a carrier perspective. We have existing kind of turnkey applications. If you look at at and site, you'll see that they're already offering a couple of, of packaged applications and that they are recruiting more ISVs in order to come and join um, their usage model. And um, it's basically built on components that run carriers' networks already. So, our SPCs, our application servers, um, our WebRTC gateways, all of the various components for call routing, for analytics and so on that run carrier networks in the world today are also at the heart of what's being offered out of our cloud. And you know, with a flexible kind of deployment model so that you can actually host out of our cloud, get to market very quickly, and uh, then deploy uh, either uh, in your network or in a hybrid fashion as you tie in services from, from that network place. Okay, so I'll, I'll sum up. Um, basically, uh, just to uh, kind of let you know that if you are interested uh, in, um, in, you know, how you would go about basically offering API services from a carrier perspective, then um, that's really kind of where we're focused is on helping our partners to get to market. We don't deal with retail CPaaS applications. We're not trying to deal direct to enterprise. We're not dealing direct to end customers. Uh, it's all a kind of white labeled solution. And um, um, it's, you can see that, that AT&T is the first customer, but there's a stream of other carriers that are kind of, on, we're, that we're onboarding at the moment. Any questions?